It's a good question. Um, and what do you do in those extreme cases? Uh, is it ever is it ever right or righteous or allowed at least to uh, resort to violence to defend your your loved ones? Here's the thing. Uh, two points, I think. One is that uh, to say that uh, we should refrain from violence is not to say we should do nothing. Uh, when Jesus says, do not resist an evildoer in Matthew 5, the word, the Greek word that he uses there, doesn't mean to do nothing. It actually has the connotation of do not reciprocate in kind. Don't sink to their level. The thing is, is that, that we're so conditioned by a culture of violence that we instinctively go to the, the extreme measure of, of resorting to violence. And in doing that, we miss all the other things we could have done along the way. So my first point is that it doesn't mean do nothing. There's, you get in the way, you obstruct the person, you distract the person. There's, there's uh, all sorts of things you can do. Uh, the second thing is that um, the way that people usually think about this is as follows. Uh, people start with this most extreme case uh, of someone breaking in and threatening your wife or your children or, or something like that. And since it seems so obvious to us, it's obvious that we should do anything we need to do to stop the intruder and protect our loved ones, uh, we assume that whatever Jesus meant when he says, uh, never resort to violence and to love your enemies, whatever he meant, he didn't mean that. But see, the thing is, is that when Jesus says love your enemies, uh, he's, the first thing that people would think about in the first century is, uh, Jewish people anyways, would think Romans. The Romans were oppressing us. They are basically the terrorists who had already won. I mean, they'd take, they were occupying Palestine, and they, they ruled by terrorizing people, and they frequently rounded up innocent people and crucified them just to flex their muscle. And so the kind of enemies Jesus is referring to are exactly the kind of enemies that it, it's our common sense to use violence against. The way I ask people to think about uh, this issue is like this. Rather than starting from this extreme case of someone breaking into my house and threatening my uh, loved ones, in which case it's obvious I should resort to violence, what if I, starting today, what if we, starting today, uh, just started practicing what Jesus told us to do? I encourage people every day, pick out the person you love the least and pray for them. And if they're in your vicinity, ask, how can you serve them? Pr let's practice loving enemies uh, day in and day out. And then maybe we'll find, I think we will find, uh, at least some will find, that after 5 or 10 or 15 years of practicing practicing enemy love, your character begins to change. And see, if someone breaks into your house and you genuinely love them, you don't automatically go for the most extreme uh, way of, of, of protecting your family. You want to protect them as well. If my son got deranged and came in and was going to, you know, was threatening my other two kids, I wouldn't immediately go for a gun, not that I have a gun, but I wouldn't, you know, just try to snuff them out. We do that because we don't value those people. That is nothing but an intruder. It's not a human being. And therefore, we feel, okay, taking their life, feel justified, feel immoral if we don't. Uh, but if we really love them, well, that changes. It reframes everything. And um, now your brain is working for creative ways to resolve this conflict short of killing anybody. Um, and so I would encourage folks to, to just walk in this 24-7, uh, practicing loving your enemies in little ways, every way you can, and grow into the kind of love that Jesus is talking about.